Hi, Five Month Kids. Welcome to Bible School. Uh, for the last several weeks, we have been um, studying about the life of Jesus and um, how he came to earth um, to do God's will, and he lived a perfect life. Last week, we talked about the great exchange where um, Jesus died on the cross, his, his perfect life. He was a perfect sacrifice in exchange for us. We are sinful. We can't get to heaven on our own because, because of those sins. So the great exchange is Jesus' perfect life um, to take the place for our sins so that we get to go to heaven um, and we can be um, have the righteousness of Jesus to get to go to heaven. Um, so that's what we were talking about last, last week. Um, today we're going to talk about some things Jesus did that showed us that he was man, but he still obeyed God perfectly. Um, these events happened when Jesus was about 30 years old. So Jesus was beginning his ministry. He was beginning to teach um, and he knew his life would eventually um, end with a sacrifice that he was going to die for us. He knew that. So if you remember, um, weeks and weeks ago, we learned about Malachi, um, the last Old Testament prophet, and he told the people that a messenger was going to be coming and prepare the way for the Lord. And a couple weeks ago, we learned about um, John the Baptist, and that was, he was the messenger, um, and he was preparing the, the way for, for Jesus. And today, we're going to read a little bit more about him. So grab your Bibles. We're going to open up to the book of Matthew, which is the first book in the New Testament. Um, we're going to be in chapter 3, so that's the big 3, verse 1. It's the very first um, verse right there. So we're going to be reading verses 1 and 2 to see, all right, what's going on um, with, with John the Baptist? Um, verse 1, in those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, repent. For the kingdom of heaven has come near. So in this, um, John the Baptist is out preaching about Jesus. He's telling the people, repent. And um, repent is kind of a big word. Um, and repent means to turn away from your sins. It means you have to recognize that you do sin. And a sin is any wrong thing that you do. Or a sin could be not doing the right things that you know you should do. So it's saying you need to recognize that you do have sin in your life. And you want to change. Um, and so John knew that the promised Messiah was already here. He knew he was born. He knew he was living on earth. And he was um, doing what he was called to do, preparing the way for Jesus, the Messiah. Let's listen a little further in verses 5 and 6 to see, um, see what John's doing and then what happens. So verses 5 um, and 6, chapter 3 still. People went out to him from Jerusalem and all Judea and the whole region of the Jordan. People are coming to John the Baptist. They're confessing their sins. They were baptized by him in the Jordan River. So they are coming to him from all over. They hear, the, they hear his message about the Messiah coming and they confess. Um, confess means to admit something that you've done. Um, so they're confessing their sins and then they're being baptized. So John is preaching to them about their sins so that they would understand that they need to be forgiven. Um, this baptism going under the water and then coming back up was a sign <clears throat> that the people were sinners and they wanted to be true children of God and they wanted to be um, prepared for the Lord. And so this is who John the Baptist was preparing them for. He's preparing them for the Lord, for Jesus. Um, so John is baptizing the people, preparing them for Jesus. And guess what happens? Um, guess who walked up to them? Um, look in verse 13. In verse 13, it says, Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. So John's out there doing what he's been doing. He's telling people about Jesus. He's baptizing people. And Jesus himself comes. And Jesus comes and wants to be baptized by John. So John tries to stop Jesus from being baptized. John knew that Jesus is the Lamb of God. He is the Messiah. He knew 
Jesus didn't have any sins. Um, this baptism was about confessing sins and Jesus didn't have any sins. And yet Jesus wanted to be baptized. Why would he do that? The people were being baptized and Jesus was baptized as well to show them that he was a person who understood their sin. He identified with the people and with the sin in their lives, even though he himself never sinned. Jesus was showing that he was fully man. So something else happened to Jesus that showed he was um, fully man in a real way. Um, let's go to chapter 4 in Matthew. We're going to be in verses 1 and 2. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. So Jesus is um, led out to, to this wilderness. He spends time 40 days, which is oh, it's like 10 days longer than a month. So going a whole month without food, um, you can imagine he was probably really, really hungry. He would have been weak. He wouldn't have been his most fit. He hadn't been nourished um, physically through food. He had been spending that time in prayer um, and talking to God. So that's what he had been doing, filling himself with God, but not actual physical food. So um, this is, is where we're going to find out. Okay, so the devil comes to tempt him. Um, tempting means to um, to try to get somebody to, or, or to get you to seriously think about doing something wrong, um, to, to get you to want to sin. So the devil comes to him in this weakened state and he is going to tempt him. Try to get him to do, um, to do the wrong things. So um, we're going to find out what happens when Jesus was tempted and what he did about it. So in verses three and four is what we're going to read. Oops, sorry. The tempter came to him and said, if you are the son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. I can't imagine how hungry Jesus is, it must have been. I have never gone a month without food, so I cannot imagine how hungry he must have been. He probably, it probably sounded good to him, the idea of, um, let me turn these stones into bread and eat them. And Jesus certainly had the power to do that, but he doesn't. Instead, he, he goes and he uses God's word to overcome the temptation to sin against God. He says, it is written, and he's talking about it's written in God's word. Man doesn't live on bread alone, but on the words that comes from the mouth of God. So he doesn't give in to this temptation um, that the devil puts before him. So the devil isn't finished with him yet. He's going to try again. He is really crafty, and he is very persistent. So there's a second temptation, and that's found in verse 5. Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you and they will lift up, they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, it is also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. So Satan, he's still hungry. He has still not been fed, takes him and he's going to try again. He takes him to the highest place and um, the highest place of the temple. And he looks down and he has Jesus look down and he says, throw yourself down. The angels will save you. Satan even knows scripture and he, he says scripture about it. But again, Jesus stands up um, for what is right. Um, the devil was tempting Jesus' faith in God. He was telling Jesus to test God by jumping off of the highest point and seeing if God would save him. The devil wanted to, Jesus to prove that God was telling the truth in his word. Um, and, so, and so Jesus, he recites scripture again. Jesus uses God's word to overcome the devil's temptation and say no to sin. 
this is not it. The devil tries again. Verses 8 and 11. 8 through 11 is what we're going to read. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All this I will give you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him and angels came and attended him. Again, the devil takes him to a high place, shows him the world and says, this can all be yours. If you just bow down to me, it'll all be yours. But Jesus doesn't give in to temptation. Again, Jesus knew God's word. It is written, he said, you shall worship only God and serve only him. Do you see, Jesus used God's word to overcome the devil's temptations. Jesus told the tempter three times, it is written. And then he used a part of scripture. Those verses kept Jesus focused on God and his word and not on the temptation before him. Jesus knew God's word and trusted it to help him while he was being tempted. Jesus never sinned. God used these temptations of Jesus to show us that Jesus understands. He can identify with us when we are tempted to do something wrong. He's been there. We are tempted every day to sin against God, just like Jesus was tempted. The difference between Jesus and us is that Jesus was able to say no and stop the temptation completely. He did not sin. We, on the other hand, often say yes, and we, we sin every day. This is why we need Jesus. This is why Jesus had to come as a man to earth so he could take the punishment for sinners and offer us forgiveness and eternal life. You know, we can trust God's word. It will help us overcome the temptations we face, just like it did for Jesus. But we need to know his word before it can help us. And that is the challenge. We'll never overcome sin perfectly like Jesus did, but we can use the power of God's word to do better and better. The more you learn God's word, the better you become at, at spotting the sin in your life. Then when you are tempted to sin, the Holy Spirit will help you use God's word to fight against it and win. We can all do better when it comes to knowing God's word. We need to know it well in order to overcome the temptations to sin. And that means being serious about learning and memorizing scripture. We need to spend time daily in God's word so we know it. So that when a temptation comes, we can be like Jesus and, and say, it is written. And tell what God's word says so we can focus on God's word and not on the temptation. Um, let's go ahead and close with prayer. Dear God, thank you so much for, for sending Jesus as a human who experienced everything that we experienced, that he can identify with us and understands what it feels like to be tempted. Thank you that he was perfect so that he could be our savior. God, help us to spend time in your word every day. Help us to memorize your word so when temptation comes, we can, we can know your word and use it to help us fight off temptation. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the freedom we have to have it in our homes and read it every single day. We love you and are so grateful for all the blessings you give us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining me for Bible School. I hope you will be back again next week. 